All praises to our Elohim and to his only begotten son, Yeshua HaMashiach, and to all the ox and the codies scattered to the four corners of the earth. Shalom. How y'all doing this morning? Well, it's morning where I am right now. I'm not sure what time you're watching this or listening to this, but shalom. So, brothers and sisters, I was listening to this video by Malcolm X. And uh, I just want to preface it before I play it that I'm in no way, shape, or form condoning Muslim religion, the Muslim religion, or Muslim beliefs. I don't. I'm going to say that so you understand, first and foremost, that I was listening to, uh, I forgot what, who it was. Was it Hebrew Nation Building or. Uh, no, I think it was Mr. Hebrew Wynn. And he made a very interesting observation. That's the word. I got to think about these things <laughs> before I say them. But he made a very interesting observation. And then when thinking and praying about it more, it it makes a lot of sense. And it is with regards to, you know, everybody keeps talking about Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. And mainly the white people like to push MLK Jr. Now, I'm not disrespecting the man. I do understand. It, uh, under stress, and many of our people do this, you think that you need to appease your enemy so you can live a better life. And it's actually not, given that he was preaching some of the word of our Elohim, but he was also mixing it with these dreams and visions. What scripture talks about, like, he don't give everybody dreams. Some of these dreams come from our own carnal hearts. He didn't give it. And if he didn't give it, and you're out there giving dreams and they didn't come true, <laughs> you know, it's not going to work out very well. The point of the matter with MLK is our people are never supposed to integrate with their enemies. Never. The scripture says that they cleave to us, not us cleave to them. And a lot of our people don't quite get that. Even still today, uh, they operate in this mindset. Like, how many of y'all notice that our people think like their oppressors? They think like the white people. They hate their own people and treat us like... They try to separate themselves from who they are and treat us like the enemy. It's just crazy. It really is. But let me read Joshua 23, verse 1 to 15. I know it's a little long, but <clears throat> we'll do this. And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies around about that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. And I just want y'all to know that this is the KJV version. So it's going to say Lord and God. But we know by now, hopefully. <laughs> and Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan. With all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward. And Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you. And drive them from out of your sight. And ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God had promised unto you. Didn't we tell you about that? Right? The Most High gave the land to the Israelites. Because what? He's the landlord. He created the planet. He can give land to whoever he pleases. Who he blessed and who he calls his people. So all these other nations right now while we're in our captivity are very much pissed and happy that we are down in this position. So don't for a second think that they don't know. Okay, so where were we? Be ye therefore very courageous to keep 
and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moshe, that he turn that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand to or to the left, that ye come not among these nations. These that remain among you neither make mention of the name of their gods. So no Jesus and no all of that other stuff, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them, but cleave unto the Lord your God as ye have done unto this day. What did he say? Who you cleaving to? Your Elohim. You ain't cleaving to them, but some of y'all still every minute you want to mention five, every five seconds, I've got Gentiles that follow me. Well, I, yes, they, yeah, yeah. Oh, you sound like you're cleaving to them more than they're cleaving to you. OMG, back up. <laughs> Cleave to your Elohim. He's the one that blesses. He's the one that causes curses to come upon you. So a lot of our people over here, I've seen that they're over here fighting over land. And I know there's certain battles that you just don't fight. Because the most I already said, listen, my sheep, Hears my voice. So if you're not hearing our Elohim and you running with every false doctrine and every devil and demonic doctrine out there, you're not hearing his the Elohim because you're not his sheep. You have gone wayward. And even while talking to Elohim, he's like, look, certain things you just don't need to the the falling away must happen. And during this falling away, you're going to have people who are still not firm and grounded and rooted in this truth running left, right, and center like chickens with their necks or their heads cut off because they still don't understand the power of our Elohim. No matter how much you try to influence and tell them, listen, our Elohim is not a regular, regular man. He's not a man. He's not a flesh. He's not a man that he should lie. Stop comparing him to a man. Stop limiting him. Stop claiming you think you know who he can use and who he cannot use in order to bring about his destiny. You see women preaching or you see certain other people preaching and you think that you can walk up and say, oh, look, Elohim ain't going to use them. You ain't even God. How do you know what he can do? How do you even know? Because you don't read the scriptures for yourself to see. This is our Elohim who spoke the world into being. Spoke the world into existence. I can't quite break down the power because right now on this planet, a lot of our people are so carnal, are so visual. They think if I don't see it with my own eyes, I won't believe it. Lack of faith. It is really disorienting and really annoying that people claim to believe in our Elohim but they still deny the power the power the power the power he is power when people say things like oh maybe we should go to Africa you know what if that is the that, that is Elohim's way of telling us that we should go? no <laughs> when he works and he puts your enemies down you will know you won't have any question that it's him when it comes to the time for him to clear out the way so you can get back into your land. What are you talking about? You keep questioning and limiting our Elohim to a man. He's not you. He's not your neighbor. He is none of these fleshly characters on this planet. What are you doing? Some of y'all are not. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> It's like every time when I, I try to listen to some of these so-called teachers and they're, they're preaching about land. Ain't no land coming up and saving anybody. It's not, a, it's not, America is not the redeemer. It will be destroyed. And all of y'all holding on to America will be destroyed with it. Point blank, period. You holding on to land that the Most High didn't bless you with. Remember, when Israel was blessed, the Most High gave them everything. So much riches, so much land they couldn't contain because he blessed them abundantly. That is how he would bless you if you would only humble yourself and return to him. That is how he would bless you. Now you don't have any land, but you're over here sitting down going stark crazy arguing about America being your land or Africa being your land or whatever the cockatoo ideas you keep coming up with. 
You don't have any land because the scripture says the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. Say it with me again. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. So when you got cursed, your earth and your land got given to who? Them Kazarian Jews, those people sitting in your position, those people imitating you, those people took your <laughs> took your identity. Those are the people that own your land. You don't own land. You pay taxes for days on this land and you can't even own it. You don't own nothing because your enemy does. That is the point I'm trying to make. And people over here talking about, oh, they know about your inheritance. And just to, just to preface this some more, when you do get the land, it's to the most high's chosen people. Not every Israelite is chosen. So get that straight. If you don't have a relationship with Elohim and his son, you don't obey the first two greatest commandments of all that all the laws hang on. I don't even know why you over there getting all worked up. You need to just chill out, humble yourself. Because some people think when you said don't have, don't be prideful, they think that you're you're trying to tell them, look, don't be happy in the fact that you find out who that you're Israelite. No, no one's trying to say not to be happy. Because pride, the way how, if if you think about how the etymology of words and, and how your enemy uses words, then you could understand why people say, look, it's better to be humble than to be prideful. Yes, be happy that you know who you are. Yes, be happy that the Most High still chose you and he never let you go. Right now, he's, you know, he's giving you time to get right. And while he takes these curses off of you and onto the enemy, but you have to, do, it's not about just sitting back and eating popcorn and watching everything go by. And I did make a mistake and say to sit back, but I didn't finish the rest of it. While you're sitting back, do the things that he told you to do. What? Obey his laws, commandments, and statutes, right? Get baptized, love him, have a relationship with him and his son. Because you got some people going to start crazy now. And they're talking about there's no, 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 uh, no Messiah. Start crazy, out of their minds. So much profanity. They are the anti-Messiah themselves. And they look like us. But the falling away is happening. And it must happen. People going after their own doctrines, of their own understanding. Yes, I feel, this is what they say, they feel that this is right. No scriptural knowledge, no leading of the, the holy Ruach, none, none of that. They just feel it. So they've made themselves gods. There's a lot of demonic entities running rampant right now. and You don't have the right people who are performing these exorcisms. So what do you expect? You got a lot of people just, you know, just all over fluttering, thinking just, oh, it's flat earth. Oh, now America's going to save us. Oh, the land is just going to to get up and form into a man. And <laughs> oh, America's turned upside down. They're lying to us. And then you use the same people who you know are historically liars information to try to back up. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It, the most high our uh, Elohim is not that complex. It's not that complicated. You make it complicated because you want to be right. You want to win so bad, but it's not about you like that. You thinking about your selfish endeavors. When we try to tell you that you over there worrying about other Gentiles, you think, Oh no, you're being evil. Because the Gentiles are united and that's still not helping your plight. That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. Now, when your people unite, now that is where the power is. Unite under the true living Elohim. Right? Love him with all your mind, heart, body, soul. Love your people as yourself. But the more you preach these things, it's like the more people get rebellious. And the rebellion or the rebels are being purged, will be purged. So don't worry when you see certain people going through some things. Understand, you continue to cleave to your enemies, they will be traps and snares. Now let me read the rest of this. 
Um, so it says, but cleave unto the Lord, your God, as he have done unto this day for the Lord have driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day because of who your Elohim. One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. He it is that fighteth for you as he had promised you. He don't break promises. We started this saying that our Elohim is not a promise breaking Elohim. He never breaks his promise. So all of y'all Gentiles out there talking about our Elohim done changed Israel. No. No, this ain't spiritual. This is a bloodline thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> Y'all want to be so, ooh, you had your chance. You had your opportunities and y'all are like <laughs> corrupt. You corrupted the image of our, our Elohim son. You corrupted the image of our Elohim. You corrupted the image of our savior, our redeemer, putting it in wood and stone. Putting him in wood and stone. Putting this image that you were never supposed to make. And they're making the world bow down to it. And you don't think you're going to pay for that? Look at what we have to go through for doing the same thing. Now you're making the whole world do it. You don't think you're not going to suffer? <laughs> Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God. Else if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them, and go in unto them, and they to you, know for a certainty that the Lord your Elohim will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. But they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Now, I've seen some people think that the heathens went too far. <laughs> now, look, I agree. They do go too far. However, if you read the book of Obadiah, you will see the Most High always knew that they are the type of people. He told you when he said what? The thief would take what? Just enough. But these people... These Edomites and these other nations, especially Esau, what does he do? He takes everything. He goes, it's basically saying that he goes that far. That's how his people are. That's how his bloodline is. That's how he has been known to, to behave. You know them by the traits. Some of y'all are still denying who is who. And Arabs are Caucasians too. Some of them are Caucasians, right? And I, we'll talk about that whole thing. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave it alone. As I already said, Israel is you and then the other nations. <laughs> so I don't even, yeah. If the Most High has me address it, so be it. But no. Basically, as we've said before, you are not supposed to be cleaving to them. Every time you over there, oh, Gentiles this, oh, Gentiles that, oh, what about this? Oh, they're waking, waking up out of their fantasy. Waking up that, oh, my goodness, they can't keep doing this for very long because what they thought would never come back to haunt them is coming back to haunt them with a vengeance. Like never before. You can't do evil to people and not expect it to come for you. You can't block other people's blessings, Israel, or the rest of the nations, and not expect your blessings to also come to naught. Whatever you do, 
will come back to you. You do evil, you get evil. That's why the scripture is telling you that do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Because this, the most high, even reading the scriptures, you know, he knows how you all call it the law of attraction. But he knows how things go. Whatever you do, you do good for somebody, it'll come back to you. But if you continuously, sometimes you see some people suffering, even our own people. You don't know what they did. They were there blocking people's blessings. Some of them cleaving to the enemy still. Like, I saw some stuff where there was a guy who was helping, I believe, uh, a heathen. And the police came for him. And it's like in my ear. And I was trying to figure out, like, I was really shook up about it. And the most I said, I'm telling my people, stop cleaving to these Gentiles. But they won't listen. And as long as they keep doing this... The Gentiles will be set to come heavier at them. If you don't separate, you will also incur the curses upon you. This is what Martin Luther King did. He tried to get our people to integrate. And that was never, 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 never something that our Elohim ordained. He never put that into place. MLK was operating in a place of fear. He was trying to put himself in a God position by thinking that our Elohim was trying to join us together. And what happened? Eventually, so you want to be a false prophet? You want to be a false teacher? You might not see that your end is coming nearer than you think. A Most High will punish those who were supposed to do the thing that they were supposed to do, but they went and diverted off of fear. That's why fear is so dangerous because our Elohim said what? He did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, love your Elohim with all your mind, heart, body, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Power, love, and they sound mind. So you're able to discern and decipher through this world and the wickedness. You're not like them. You're a peculiar people. You're not supposed to be like everybody else. Every single wickedness they do, you are supposed to be the standard. They're wicked, you're good. Your heart remains pure. And I know even in this time, a lot of us are just so tempted to be hard-hearted and bitter against each other. Because... Most of the times, our people do the most evil to us. Don't act like I'm not telling the truth, y'all. Y'all know this. Sometimes it's from our own nation that we receive the most. And I ain't trying to look, Gentiles, it's not for you to run around with because y'all like to listen and run with the wrong stuff. But the only reason I'm saying this is because our people have the power to pull it together. To heal or help to heal our land? Not even help, sorry. Pull it together to heal our people. If they put out all this covetousness and this, oh, well, well, I'm married to a heathen and I would rather marry to. Now, I'm not saying this for myself. I'm just saying this is how I've seen and had people write in talking about their marriage to heathens because black men don't treat them right or what they think of this one or, or black women or. All kinds of selfish thoughts because hurt people hurt people. So because they're hurt, they're going to continue living in their covetousness or living in their fornication or their adultery or their idolatry because they think that, oh, well, I'm going to hurt the whole nation because I got hurt by this one, this one, and this one. So this is the type of life we live. I know that our people are not going to all come together. I mean, come on now, I've said this from before, through the spirit of our Elohim, it was made known, two-thirds of our people, which is a large chunk of our people, must go. Right now, you see them breaking off, running after, now they're denying the, the Messiah. Now, <laughs> now they're denying the word of our Elohim. They once again disobeying him. You try to tell them, listen. 
The obedience part comes from obeying his word. You got people running outside of the scripture to go grab the enemy's word and history and documents and claim that based off of this, which they don't even realize that you're contradicting our Elohim. You're calling our Elohim, and I don't like to say this word, but you're coming against him and calling him a liar. And he doesn't lie. He has no reason to lie. And this is why I always say he's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. There's none like him. I will continue to lift up the name of my Elohim because there's none like him. And I understand that he's not a man. He has power. He is the one that formed Adam out of the dust. He breathed <laughs> life into him. He created this planet just by speaking none of y'all can do this but you keep putting him in a box i can't quite i can't quite i can't even describe the power our elohim has right now he's held back because a lot of y'all are operating in powerlessness and a lot of y'all are questioning our elohim's power and truth and knowledge the fact that he knows better and he's the one that has he said he created evil he created good so you don't think he knows what's going on and you're leaving him out of the equation by running to your enemy's books or running after these other camps who are like, no, they don't tell you what to do. They don't say fast and pray and get your power up. They don't say, let's have a time where we, we completely acknowledge our Elohim. Well, every day, actually. No, they are like, no, listen to our doctrine. Our doctrine is telling you that you can abuse this one and this one amongst us and it'll be fine. They don't say it in that, <laughs> that, those words per se, but when you truly listen, that's what they're saying. They don't have any regard for a specific type of people amongst us. <clears throat> I ain't even going to go into that right now, but no regard. The scripture tells you everything you need to know, but because our people, some of us are still blinded, still blinded because you are so into this world. You are so still absorbed or absorbing the knowledge of this world. You think that your knowledge is better than our Elohim's. You think you have all the answers. I'm not saying this because, oh, I think I have all the answers, but I'm reading the scriptures. I try to keep as much of my interaction with the Elohim just private, but interact with him as much as possible, like daily, actually. <laughs> but having that relationship with him because some of these people over here just preaching off their own carnal minds and you find out later on that they're cleaving to heathens and you still follow them like the pied piper many of y'all gonna follow them off to off the cliff you already are, are set in place for deception all these other nations they already set up even the sellouts amongst us to lead you astray they want this one world order or new world order they want it but if there's people out here that is causing our people to get right to know the true elohim they don't like that they don't like it at all they trying to get this one world order so they can rule all over the world. And then all of a sudden you got these little small voices coming out the wazoo saying, listen, this is our Elohim is not over there. It's not with them. Those little cement piles they call churches. No. They over here denying the laws, but then and the Old Testament, they deny the laws the commandments that you can keep them and the old Testament, but the contradiction because the devil contradicts itself a lot is you still keep tithing, but you say the old Testament is obsolete and over. You still keep tithing, but you say the law is done away with. Who do you think y'all are, are worshiping in these churches? The devil. I'll say it for you. Belial, mammoth. 
That's who you're over there worshiping in these churches. Because they're lying to you. They tell you, don't keep the law, but they're still over here talking about why it's important to tithe. And if you don't tithe, I have to bring it up. Because the Elohim puts it in my heart, I'll, I bring it up. Because some of y'all out here want to call our people for knowing who they are. You want to call us devils. But the true devils, you're over there calling them blessed. This is how this world is, calling good evil and evil good. You call the blessed cursed and the cursed blessed. The things that are supposed to be blessed. Blessings. The truth. Oh, oh no. The, 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 the talking about that the Redeemer doesn't look like them. Oh no, they're, they're evil. Well, I don't know. Your Redeemer probably looks like you, but my Redeemer looks like me. <laughs> okay? And from the scriptures, maybe y'all should get your own Bible too. Because the our scriptures, his description don't look nothing milky. And the usually milky skin or pale skin. And I'm not talking about albinos, so. But for the most part, milky skin has no protection from the sun. Okay. And it gets damaged. It's susceptible to damages. And our Elohim don't make no, mm -mm, he don't make no mistakes. We'll we'll talk about that at a whole other time. But why do I always go off on a tangent, y'all? Because I wanted to stress the power. I see this happening so much. Our people are not stressing the power of our Elohim. The this is where faith comes in. Like he says, you have to have faith the, the size of a mustard seed. Some of y'all pray and things that you never thought would happen, happens. Because you put forward your faith. You're vibrating. Um, and praying from your heart. I ain't talking about the little uh, rep repetitions like the scripture talks about. The heathens like to do that. Hail Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now, I don't even know why they pray praying to Mary. Did the scripture say pray to Mary? Did the scripture say pray to the saints? Did the scripture say pray to the disciples? No. No. Did the scripture say pray to Jesus? No. Scripture says pray to our Elohim. Not even to the, 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 the Savior. To our Elohim. To the Most High. But some people, they still don't understand the reason for our Savior, the Redeemer, because their knowledge is still limited. And they're, they're now saying, no, it's just the Elohim. Yeah, it's our Elohim. But, you know, I, I'm not going down there today. If you haven't gotten it yet, it's probably not for you. Two-thirds must go. So it says, know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you. Do you know what snares and traps are? What's a trap? A trap is something that gets you caught up, gets you caught, stops you, snares, trickery, Things that, that that webs and deception and yeah, like our people were what? Trapped. Trapped and taken into captivity from Africa into the new so-called new world. <laughs> okay. Some of y'all still vesting on land. I don't know. Where exactly? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I think I do. This falls, what is it? Falls chart, falls tribe chart. Because you said, look, it's only dealing with one side, one corner. And people get all up in their feelings. I didn't say I scattered the people to the four corners of the earth. Our Elohim did. So when somebody giving you one corner and you over there running with it like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You running with your false doctrine. You can't get mad when the Savior returns and he don't come for you. You get left or squished. Yeah, the blood will be up to the bridle. Mm -hmm. You think you're right in your own eyes. Wise in your own eyes. You're leaning on your own understanding because there's a way that is right onto a man, but the way thereof is destruction. The way thereof is destruction. 
Yep. If you ain't praying about it, and I say this, but it gets complicated. Because there's some people who they claim their praise. You know, the Most High says his sheep hears his voice. Point blank, period. And if he said in the scriptures that his people were taken in yokes and chains and he never changes, what do you think that means? Then you start to say, then you make it, every time you talk about, oh, the white man is lying to you, oh, the white man did this, you're making them your God. You're making it about them. Now you become paranoid. Now you have lost it completely. The truth is not in you. Because now you are trying to fight against them with your own limited knowledge. Because you're making them that more powerful than they even are. You're the one that's giving them their power. You have always been the ones giving them their power. Either you're trying to covet their ways. Now you're trying to deny certain things and you're blaming it on them. So it's like either way, it's like a lose-lose. Oh, they the, the map that they have, they turn it upside down or da -da -da -da, blah, blah, blah. Some of y'all ain't never left the U.S. either. Never come out of America, but yet you trust in their knowledge. You're still trusting their knowledge. You're still trusting their knowledge. When you go out to their books written by them, I trust my Elohim, right? Even before the scriptures, I would be reading some things like even how we were talking about how white people really came into being. I didn't know all about that splicing and genetic thing. Then I read the book of Jasher. And it was talking about men in the days of Noah were evil. They were mixing abominations, based, creating abominations, mixing things. And the most uh, provoking are Elohim. Because it provokes him. When you try to distort his creation that he made in perfection. Because some of y'all will be like, oh no, he, 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 he created error. But that's not true. Al Shatan, you forget how he is. He has always wanted to be God. So instead of trying to create things of his own, this is how you even know how who his people are. You know who his people are. Because instead of using the, his own stuff, he uses the Elohim stuff to try to create his stuff. Like, how about you create your own stuff off your own independent work without Elohim? But you can't do that. You know who I'm talking about, the people who they use the original you, you, from your dancing, your creativity, everything. And they try to make it better off of, oh, I put that in quotes. Because many times it blows up later on. Like I said, if somebody ever came up with a chip to put, I mean, if they ever told you to put the chip in your body, you better not. Do you know, see how many malfunctions their stuff have? Even their laptops, their phones, they all have an expiration date. They all have a time when they start to malfunction. If you want to be silly and take on that mess and then that's up to you. You want to keep trusting your enemy. The most high put everything in the book to warn you, to help you, to make the right choices, to be righteous people. You, in the end, choose. He's not forcing it down your throat like the enemy does. He gave you the choice. You want to be righteous? It might take a fight to be righteous in this wicked world. But you still have the fight in you. Because that's why you're still here today. You still have that fight. To not to let your heart grow wicked and cold. To not let them control your narrative and control who you are in our Elohim. You don't have to be evil. You don't have to turn to the dark side. Keep reading them scriptures. Keep fasting and praying. Melt your heart. But let me finish this scripture and let me pray. Let me play on Malcolm X like I said I was, y'all. It's been a while. I haven't spoken to you in a long time so excuse me okay
in uh, verse 14 to 15 reads, And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth, and ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you. And not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore, it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until ye have destroyed you from off this good land, which the Lord your God hath given you. So for all our people who like to say, hey, you know, the, the heathens went too far because they have always been ones to go too far. That's why Elohim tried to, to say, no, 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 don't go. Stay under my power so I can protect you, so I can love you, so I can keep you from your enemies. Because he knew this. Y'all are people even today still taking the chances with our enemy, knowing that they don't have no chill. Even while they're smiling in your face. They don't have no chill, no empathy, no love for you. You keep quarreling and arguing that they go too far, but they've always been that type of people. You took the chance when we walked out of the Most High's will. And every time we continue to go outside of his will, that's us risking or taking risks that our Elohim didn't tell us to take. So yes, they go too far. And they will continue to go too far. As long as our people decide that they don't want to do the will of our Elohim, that's what they do. That's what they do. Because I see, I see where some people are like, yeah, you know, the, not, the heathens weren't supposed to do all these other stuff. Yes, they were supposed to. The Most High said to, that when you cleave onto them and you disobey him, what did he say right here? Until he have destroyed you from off this good land, which the Lord your God had given you. He didn't say until, I'm just going to hurt you a little bit. I'm just going to, you know, poke you a little bit. I'm going to just stab you around. No, until you are destroyed, you angered our Elohim, drove him to wrath. Because you don't want to listen. You know how our people are. Even to this day, they're still doing this, running after false doctrines. Second guessing our Elohim about, well, what if the Africans really want? No, that's not our Elohim calling you into Africa. Be still. Stop with all this running back and forth and our Elohim didn't call you. He's not the one calling you into Africa when he's done and he made the land desolate. You know, he tells you, read the scriptures for yourself. Some of y'all still don't want to read the scriptures. You still are not out of this Christianity mindset. You like people to feed you the word instead of go feeding yourself some of y'all would rather just you know okay you just take on other people's beliefs and opinions instead of going and researching it and doing the work for yourself these stuff these things are in the scriptures the curses are not done yet when it's done and it's time and it's good and your enemy ain't, won't have any hold on you, they will put you back in the land, basically. They will want you to go. They're like, get away from us. No, put them back. No more. <laughs> that is our Elohim. That is how you will know that that is his work. Once again, let me reiterate the power of our Elohim to lay down and flatten nations. If you get out of his way and stop limiting him, stop putting him in a box, stop making him into this carnal mind or man that has limitations. He has no limit. If you say he has no beginning or no end, no, he has no limit when it comes to what he will do for his people. But he needs for you to be obedient. Not think you're being obedient by, oh, I'm going to do this law here and I'm going to do this law or this command, but I can, I can break this one. No. While you're, I know it's not always going to be easy in this society to completely do all the laws, but do it to the best of your ability. 
and your heart. Not, do not let your heart get hardened. Fast and pray and melt that heart. A lot of these people aren't telling you out there that you need to fast and pray. One of the biggest things about humbling yourself and fasting is it helps to stop that, that heart from becoming brick. Because this world can make you so bitter. Because scripture talks about it too, not to let your heart get bitter. Sorry if I'm making, I think it's my robe that's probably um, rubbing against the mic. But you can't let your heart get stone cold. And that's what fasting and praying does. Humble yourself before Elohim. He's not going to hear no stone cold hearted person because your motives won't be good. He can't hear you. So for all of those still questioning our Elohim, power, power, power. There are powers in this world. The scripture talks about powers, powers in which he created this planet, powers in which he keeps us alive. His breath breathes through us that keeps us alive. He created us. Everything that works in this planet, the way it does, it works because of our Elohim. From the plants, to the ants, to the birds in the air. All of this designed by our Elohim. I can't quite describe the power so our people can understand so you can stop second guessing him. But no, if you limit him... And you are still like, look, this land is going to save you. You're still, you're not in the mindset for the kingdom. You're just not. America is not going to save you. The dirt, the land, <laughs> it's not. It's just not. It's this crazy thinking. If it's upside down, because some of y'all are, are still cleaving to heathens, and that's the reason why y'all coming up with these silly doctrines and opinions. Keep your imaginations to yourself, because all they're doing is distorting the truth, and they're going against our Elohim's true, perfect, incorruptible word. Anyway, let me play uh, Malcolm X and... Um, Brothers and sisters, in this day where the curses are coming off, we said, please stop blocking. Don't block your blessing. Don't block other people's blessings. Don't be a stumbling block unto each other. I know all of us won't unite. But for those who hear your Elohim's voice, you know when you read his scriptures and you know he's telling you, look, you see the curses, the Deuteronomy 28 curses, and I know y'all don't like to hear that, but I still have to bring it up. You see it on our people, the madness, especially where they just every minute they're off put it. Every single, it's a new idea or it's some new fair weather bird brained, just <laughs> bird brained idea. Some of the time, oh, when. They preach this heathen doctrine to cleave to cleave to heathens. I guarantee you, and I think I said this before, nine out of ten times they're in bed with a heathen. If not physically, in business with them or something else, they are in, in bed with a heathen. So trust and believe they don't have your best interest at heart. They're speaking from the heathens. Let's King Solomon, perfect example. King Solomon, every single time we go back, what did the Most High say? That from going with these other women from these other nations, what happened? His heart changed. So if you're listening to someone that's over there sleeping with a heathen or you either doing business with them or having sex with them or whatever, and they're over there, that's their interest. Do you think that they have your best interest at heart? Nine out of time, not nine out of ten times, probably not. Because the scripture says it, and as just as it says it, you see that happening so many times to people who are so-called swirling or 
what what do you call them coons or I think I was watching Radical since I think she called them was it Negropians, <laughs> but nine out of ten times they are swirling. And what is it the most I says happen? Because a lot of y'all are still over here putting your stamp on. Well, I'm gonna swirl anyway. You well, you can swirl yourself on into the lake of fire, honey. You are making yourself perfectly open for that revelation right there. But. Their heart changes. They're preaching hard for their heathen. But make it very known that because of that, they won't even make it to the kingdom themselves. So if they're not going to make because they are putting stumbling blocks in your way. And if you're not listening to our Elohim and don't go back to the scripture, say, but okay, well, he said Elohim says this in his word. Because even now, as much as you want to say that the book is manipulated, you don't really have that much proof. It's just the language itself. But the Most High gives you enough information for you to know that even in the book itself, it tells you what's going to happen to this day. Nothing new under the sun. Because our people won't relinquish these curses. They won't relinquish the the sins. And by relinquishing the curses, like y'all love to go after the, the heathen's stuff. You love to gather and join yourself and cleave to them and their things because you want their things. And many of you are fearful because MLK was fearful. I I mean, you might say, oh, well, he wasn't because he was doing all that. His fear made him change to think that you can rightfully join with your enemy when our Elohim wasn't trying to get that together. That's not never what he intended for our people to do. It's always been separate, 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 separate. Right now you got heathens jumping and talking about, no, no, don't separate. I I saw this, uh, <laughs> I saw this comment and, I, and this is why I say they're so double-minded and fork-tongued. It's crazy. In one breath, the heathen was talking about that we don't have to separate. So he's talking to black people and then he's over there in the next breath talking about how we are something, some racial racism. Basically, he was showing his racist self. They hate us. They reject us, that, but they cleave to us. You see what I'm saying? This is why when I'm like, when people like to read that scripture about, oh, they're going to say things like, oh, we surely we've been taught wrong. Look, the, the gospel and the truth has been out for a while. The Most High is not going to take that and say, oh, you can come into the kingdom just because of that. Right? You've all, they've always had the truth with them. They've denied it because they want to be on top of the world. They're still going to be what? What did the scriptures say? That they possessed them for slavery. That's what happened. And I know a lot of y'all want to sugarcoat it for your Gentiles. But that, that that excuse that they like to use, you know how they like to manipulate. And, I didn't know. I really didn't know. Oh, they lied to us, really. Well, we've been lied to, too. But you like the lying to, clearly, because it gave you power and dominion to oppress and subjugate a whole race of people. So that's not going to work with our Elohim. So no matter what y'all want to be like, oh, well, no, these Gentiles, no. I'm reading the scripture and all it says is that by the time they're done with you, by the time this wickedness gets worse, a lot of y'all going to see what I'm talking about. You ain't finna be like, oh, poor Gentiles. (sighs) Come here. (laughs) Possess them for slavery. Because you're going to be in your right mind. You're going to come out of this state of just thinking foolishness. And... You're going to understand what our Elohim was trying to show you all this while. But anyway, brothers and sisters, let me play Malcolm. And we'll just have to make another video for another time. It's been so long. I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody is doing the things that our Elohim wants us to do. And 
So our Elohim can do mighty and powerful things for our nation. If you really love us, if you really love your people, you should be hitting that knee and praying. Elohim, save our land, save our people. They're over here destroying it. Destroying it. This is our land. Even the animals are suffering because we won't get it together. Your families, your sons, your daughters, you say you love, they're going through all of this. All of this. Because you have some won't get right, don't want to get right Negroes. Yeah, I said it. We all Negroes, aren't we? <laughs> now they're running off into all kinds of crazy territory. I'm not going to be one to be calling and claiming there's no Messiah. Nope, not doing that one. <laughs> That's just heights of madness. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, with that, ooh, 55 minutes. I felt like I was talking for 15. I'm sorry. But I love you. Stay true. Continue to press in to the kingdom. Fast pray, fast pray. Get that relationship up with our Elohim. So when you make your requests, he will hear it. So when you say, Father, these heathens bothering our people again. Let's do something about this. He hears you and he'll do what he does according to his will. Anyway, brothers and sisters, shalom.